So we're going to look into how we can get consistent structured JSON output from uh, GPT. And in particular, we're going to see how we can get more complicated type of JSON schemas, for example, nested lists or nested dictionaries uh, consistently as the output format. And this is, um, this is useful when you're using GPT not to output text for humans, but rather you would like to feed it into some downstream piece of software or process that, that you want to use. Um, in the, uh, a few months ago, I tried to do this just using the text prompt. And um, what you would tend to get is a, you know, a few bits of string it in front of the JSON. So then you have to somehow parse the JSON out or within the JSON, the, the formatting isn't quite right. So you're constantly having issues with being able to consume the JSON from the GPT output. I have to say uh, it seems to have improved a lot, but still um, I think it, it would be nice to look at whether there are more um, controllable ways of getting that uh, the output that, that you want. In this Google Colab notebook today, I'm gonna to walk through it uh, line by line and I will paste a link to this in the description below. So firstly, we will install a, a bunch of packages that we need, uh, which I've done already. And if you're gonna use this notebook, you'll need to put in your own a, uh, open AI key here and run that cell. And let's talk about the example that we're going to use today. What we would like to get out of GPT is a, a, a children's story. But instead of just having the story as a blob of text, we would like it returned to us uh, as a in JSON format with some metadata so we can do more with it. So for example, we would like to get a title, we would like the story text, and then in addition to this, we would like to get the top five most difficult words in this text and have it delivered as a list of objects. And in each object, we would like to have the actual word and also the dictionary definition. And then finally, we would like to have the word count. So let's see how we can do this. So the first method is just using prompt engineering. Let me just, uh, right, so here we've got a, a number of different themes, just dinosaurs, cats. And in this cell, we will uh, write down the messages and then make the chat completion API call. So in the messages, we have a system message where we say, you are a story writer. Please write a 200 word children's story about the theme specified. Delivered your, res your response in valid JSON format with the following keys. And so here we say we want a title for the title of the story, story text. And in this part, we say top five words for a list of five objects representing the top five hardest words in the story and its dictionary definition. Word count is the number of words. And then in the user message, we would say, please produce a story about the following theme. And then we can put in any theme we like. And here we put in the one um, about the cat. And in our API call, we will use the model uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo and then pass in those messages. And here in the, we will take the response from, from the API call, extract out the content, and we'll print it out so we can see what we get back from the model. Great, so now we have the response back from OpenAI, and you can see that the content being delivered to us is indeed in a very structured JSON format. It's got the title, the story text, our five words, and um, you can see that it's added a definition for each of those words, and finally, the word count. So that's pretty good. And just to show that it is indeed JSON format, we can convert the content into JSON and then be able to pull out, uh, you know, refer to the content using the keys. For example, we just want to get the, this list of top five words. And here you go, you can see, you can start to interrogate the response in a more structured way. 
Now, um, what if you want to, you know, you don't want to have to specify the JSON schema in free text, or maybe you want something that's even more complicated or more nested. It starts to get a little bit hairy trying to do it as free text. So here we have a different method of achieving the same. And the method is to use a feature called function calling. And in order to use function calling, you first need to define a function. And the, the way you define the function is like this. You give it a name, you give it a description, and here I've written a function that takes in a list of arguments related to a children's story and does something with it. And then you define the parameters, and this is where you specify how you want the output um, to, to be delivered. And so here we have the title, and it's type string, and it's the title of the story. Title text is also a string. Top five words, this is an array because it's a list of five objects. And within each object, we, let me just comment out this part, we would like to have two key value pairs, the word, which is a string, and the definition, which is also a string. And finally, the word count, which is an integer. And here we have the ability to uh, mandate which uh, arguments or parameters are must-haves. And here we've, we've said, oh, another little error. We've said every, every one are required. So let's run that. So we've saved that under the name function. Here, we're going to make another API call. Just delete this. We're going to make another API call with a slightly modified uh, set of messages. So the user message is the same, but the system message, we will write it like this. So please write a 200 word children's story about the theme specified and then extract the relevant data to use as arguments to pass into the given function provided. And as you can see from the API call, these two lines are the same, but these two are new. So here we have to pass in our functions. And in this case, we only have one function. So we only have one thing here, but you could pass in multiple functions. And then function call, if we specify something here, it means it, uh, GPT must use it. It's, it's not optional. Uh, all right, so let's, let's run that. And you can see that the response uh, we will extract the, the function call arguments. And this basically becomes the output that we're looking for. This, and, and this is uh, a little bit different from when we just uh, use the normal chat completions. And as you can see in the response, we have to go into function call and arguments to be able to extract um, the output that we need. So here we're going to extract that, and then we're going to print it out. So the response has come back, and it's very curious because it only came back with the title and the story text. But what about the word count and the top five words? We said that these are required, but it didn't come back with it. Well, one thing I've noticed using uh, um, um, feature calling is that when you define a more complicated type of argument um, structure, sometimes it has trouble coming back with the right things. And so what you do is to give it some additional information to help it get there. And this is called few shot learning. It means you pass it some completed examples so that it can follow and have a clear idea of what exactly you're looking for. So in this case, we're going to create an example uh, using the theme dinosaur. So the title is the T-Rex and the Brachiosaurus. The story is blah, blah, blah. And here we're going to uh, create an open AI object. And in the object, we have uh, various key value pairs, including the role is assistant, content is none. Function call is this JSON blob here. And in this JSON blob, we have the name of the function, story metadata. And in the arguments, 
we have the title, the story text, the top five words, and we've selected Magnificent, Tyrannosaurus Rex, and given it the definitions and the word count 153. So basically this entire thing is a completed example of what we would like to get back from, from the API if we asked for a dinosaur themed story. So, that's, so now we have a, an object called sample response. Let's see how we pass that into the API. So we scroll back up here in the messages, instead of having these two, we're going to have add a few more lines here. Messages actually two. Here we will add two more lines, and we're going to in the first line we're going to ask. Uh, for a story about theme one, which is dinosaur. And the response that we get back should be in the form of sample response that we created just now. Okay. There's messages two. All right, so let's see if it'll do any better. So you can see now that we've given it only one completed request and response, it was able to do and uh, deliver the output that we asked for in a much better way than we saw before. And if you were working with something even more complicated, you can add in a few more lines, a, a few more examples to help it um, get uh, to help it perform even more consistently. All right, so. Let's see one more example of an even more complicated output. So here we have the same uh, OpenAI object, but here we've called it sample response two. And what's different about it is that instead of just the top five words, the word and the definition, we also want some sample use sentences. Let's say we want this to be a list of example sentences. And here we've asked for two. So that's like a, a list nested inside an object that's inside a list that's inside JSON. So it's it, it's starting to get quite um, quite complicated. Let's run that. And remember, when you make edits to your schema, you also need to edit your function. So here, I'll just uncomment this line. And you can see here, what I've basically done is added uh, one more key to the items. So word definition and sample use. And you can see here under type, we have array because it's a list and it's a list of two sample sentences. So let's run this again. And instead of sample response, we'll put in sample response two and let's run that. Great, so it's now come back with exactly the format that we asked for. It's got the title, the story text, the word count, the top five words, and as you can see in the top five words, each of these objects now have an extra item. In addition to the word, curious, definition, eager to know or learn something, you have a sample use. Under sample use, you have a list of two sentences. The child was curious to learn about the world around her, and the cat's curious nature led it to explore new places. So that's how you can use feature calling to consistently get back um, nested structured JSON content. I have to say though, there were times when I ran this and it, it missed out word count and I still haven't figured out why. And perhaps if I gave it a few more examples, uh, yeah, a few more examples here. So this one's like a request and this one's a response. So a few more request response examples, it could potentially um, do this even more consistently. But um, to catch this, you might want to have a check in your code where you just verify that all of the keys that you expect are there. And if it's not there, then it can do a, another call to see if it can rectify that. That's it for today.